A function is said to be continuous on an interval if the function is continuous at every point on that interval, if it's continuous on its domain in that interval. For some examples, we will look at which functions are continuous on their domains. First, we need to identify what the domain is. So for a polynomial function, or for this polynomial function, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And I'm using interval notation to express my domain. Now, if I look at the graph, this function is also continuous at every point on its domain, at every point from negative infinity to positive infinity, so that means that it is continuous on its domain. For this rational function, the domain is negative infinity comma negative 3.5, and I'm using an open parenthesis there because the, ne the value negative 3.5 is not included in my domain, union negative 3.5 to infinity. You might think that the function is not continuous because it's not continuous at this one specific point. However, because this one specific point is not actually included in the domain, the function is continuous at every point on its domain. So even though negative 3.5 is not a defined value, the value negative 3.5 is not a part of the domain. Here's another example of a rational function with a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. Its domain is negative infinity to 5, union 5 to infinity. This function is continuous at every point on its domain, because even though it's not continuous at x equals 5, the value 5 is not included in the domain. The value 4.9 and 4.99 and 4.999 are included in the domain because as it gets really, really close to 5, those values are included, and same thing goes on the other side. However, the value 5 is not included in this domain, which means that it's okay if the function is not continuous at 5 because 5 is not included in the domain. To find the domain of a trigonometric graph, which in this case is a cotan graph, we're going to first need to identify the vertical asymptotes. So we have a vertical asymptote over here at negative pi, we have another one at zero, and we have a third one at pi. We are not finding every single vertical asymptote, but we are only finding the domain on the interval from negative pi to pi. So the domain here is open parentheses, negative pi to zero, close parentheses, union zero to pi. And that indicates that we have a vertical asymptote at zero and we have vertical asymptotes at negative pi and pi. Since this function, if we just look at the, if we just look at the section from negative pi to zero, it's continuous everywhere on that section. And in the, in the section from zero to pi, it's also continuous in that section. So the cotan graph is continuous on its domain. For an exponential function, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. This function is continuous at every point from negative infinity to positive infinity, so it's continuous on its domain. A logarithmic function's domain is 0 to infinity, and it is continuous on this domain shown, which means that it is continuous on the interval. So at this point, every single function that we've looked at has been continuous on its domain. So let's look at an, at an example where a function is not continuous on its domain. Here we have an example of what looks like to be a rational function, and the domain on this one, from what we can see, I'm going to say it is negative infinity to positive infinity. And I know that because even at this point, at x equals 8, the function does have an actual value there, it just jumps up. So when it's 7.9, it's down here, when it's 7.99, it's down here, but then when it's actually 8, it jumps up here. But then as soon as it's 8.01, it goes back down here. The domain of this function is negative infinity to infinity but we have a point discontinuity at x equals 8. So we would have to say, no, this function is not continuous on its domain because it is not continuous at every point on the interval. Now we're asked to determine the interval on which each function is continuous. For this first example, example a, we're going to need to use a property of square roots. And that property of square roots is that we can only take the square root of a number that is greater than or equal to 0. So 3x minus 8 must be greater than or equal to 0. If we try to plug in a negative number under the square root function, if we try to take the square root of negative 4, we wind up with an imaginary number. That can't work on a real domain. So then we just solve our inequality. We say 3x is greater than or equal to 8. x must be greater than or equal to 8 thirds. So we could either write it like that, or we could write 8 thirds infinity. And this should be a closed bracket because it actually includes the number 8 thirds.
So that's our domain in regular notation, and that's our domain in interval notation. This is the domain on which this function is continuous. And we know that it's the interval on which the function is continuous because we know that square root functions are continuous at every point on their domain. If it's continuous at every point on its domain, that must mean that the interval on which it's continuous is the same as the domain of the function. For part b, determining the interval on which the function h of x equals tangent of x is continuous, we're going to need to find the domain of the function. We know that the tangent function is continuous at every point on its domain, so now we just need to find the domain to figure out on which intervals it's continuous. The domain of a tangent graph is a little bit weird because we have a recurring vertical asymptote that's happening at pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, at 5 pi over 2, etc. We write it as x cannot equal pi over 2 plus or minus pi n. And that implies that the domain of the function can be anything except this. And by pi n, we mean that we can plug in any whole value for n, and it will produce a value that x cannot be equal to. For instance, if we plugged in n equaling negative 2, we would get x is not equal to pi over 2 minus 2 pi, or x is not equal to negative 3 pi over 2. So no matter what whole number value of n we plug in, we will get a specific vertical asymptote. We have to write it this way because there's no way that we could write out in interval notation all the intervals on which the tangent of x is continuous because that would go on forever. This is a periodic function, which means it repeats itself over and over and over again. For function c, we have a polynomial function. Polynomial functions have a domain of all real numbers. So the function is continuous from negative infinity to infinity at all points on its domain. In part d, we have a rational function. The first thing to do when you see a rational function is always to factor, so I'm going to factor the numerator. And now I can cross cancel the factor x plus 2 from the top and bottom, and I'm left with 5x minus 4 over 3 minus x. Now, this means that we have a whole at x is equal to negative 2 because we canceled a common factor from the top and bottom. So I'm just going to jot down whole at x equals negative 2. And we also have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, which I got by setting the denominator equal to 0. So that means that the domain of this function is negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to 3, union 3 to infinity. And that is the interval on which this function is continuous. This function is interesting because we're going to have to apply two different properties in order to find the interval on which the function is continuous. So the first one, which we covered in part a, is that what's under a square root needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So x plus five must be greater than or equal to zero, which means that x needs to be greater than or equal to negative five. So we would write that as negative 5 with a bracket, not a parenthesis, negative 5 to infinity. So that's one part of our domain restriction here. But then another part that we need to keep in mind is that we can never divide by 0. So this cannot equal 0, and this cannot equal 0. If 4x cannot equal 0, that means that x cannot equal 0. And if rad x plus 5 cannot equal 0, that just means that instead of being greater than or equal to 0, x plus 5 just needs to be greater than 0. So we can rewrite this as x has to be greater than negative 5. It has to be greater than negative 5 and not equal to 0. So my overall domain for this function, or the interval on which it's going to be continuous, is open parenthesis negative 5 to 0, close my parentheses, union 0 to infinity. And that's the interval on which this function is continuous. For this last function, f of x equals the natural log of 1 minus 3x plus 5. The domain restriction that we're going to be dealing with is this thing in the natural log. Remember that we cannot take the natural log of 0 or anything less than 0. So that means that 1 minus 3x is going to have to be greater than 0. And now we just solve our inequality. x needs to be less than 1 third. We can write this as negative infinity to one third. And that is the interval on which this function is continuous. In this problem, we need to determine which functions are continuous on the interval negative 5 to 3. Function 1, f of x, is a polynomial function, and polynomial functions are continuous from negative infinity to infinity. 
their domain is all real numbers. If the domain is all real numbers, then it's also continuous on the domain negative five to three. So number one works. Number two is a rational function, so I'm going to factor. And now I can cancel a common factor from the top and the bottom, but that means that I have a whole at x equals eight. So my new function is x plus four, but we have a whole at x equals eight. Eight is not within the domain of negative five to three, so that means that this function is continuous on the interval negative five to three. For h of x, our only criteria for a square root function is that the thing under the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. So nine minus two x must be greater than or equal to zero. Now I solve the inequality. X must be less than or equal to nine halves. Nine halves is 4.5. So on the interval from negative infinity to 4.5, this function is continuous. That means that it's continuous on the interval negative 5 to 3 because 4.5 is greater than 3. So all three of these functions are continuous on the interval from negative 5 to 3.